The greatest gift God has given this world is the precious gift of grace. Please understand that grace is not a teaching. Grace is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Open your spirit and prepare to receive, through Bishop Herb Andrew, God's Word of Grace, which is building you up from the inside out, while positioning you to enjoy the inheritance Jesus paid for with His blood. This is your moment of grace. Hi, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this is your moment of grace. You know, over the last few weeks, we've been addressing the question, what's in a name? We discovered that the word name in the Greek is the word anoma, O-N-O-M-A. And anoma, it refers to the nature, the character, or the authority that a person carries. When we know God's name, what we're actually declaring is that we know his nature, we know his character, and we know the scope of authority that God would use for our benefit. All of this supernaturally empowers us as believers to to believe God and, and to actually take him at his word. Listen to what the word of God says in Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. When you really begin to understand the name of God, you begin to realize that God's name is directly connected to his benefits. When you begin to know his name, you'll also begin to know and remember all of the benefits that are ours because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Understand, anything his name is, it represents something that God is never unwilling to do or to manifest in our lives. I think that's important, so I'll say it again. Anything that his name is, it represents something that God is never, ever unwilling to do or never, ever unwilling to manifest in each and every one of our lives. In other words, his name reveals to us his will, which is also a revelation of the work that Jesus has completed on that cross of Calvary. The Bible says it like this in Exodus chapter number six, verses one through four. The word of God says, then the Lord said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with the strong hand, he will let them go. And with the strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am am the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That word Lord is actually the name Jehovah or the name Yahweh. He says, I am the Lord. Verse three, he says, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, as El Shaddai, but my name Lord my name, Jehovah, my name, Yahweh, I was not known to them. But by my name, rather, Jehovah or, or Yahweh, he says, I was not known to them. In other words, what God is saying is that the people, they knew God as, as God Almighty. They knew him as El Shaddai, but as Lord capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. As Jehovah or Yahweh, by that name, they did not know him. Verse 4, he says, I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of pilgrimage in which they were strangers. 
Now notice for a moment how it is that even though Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even though they knew God as God Almighty, they had a revelation of God as El Shaddai, the Word of God declares that by my name Jehovah, or by my name Yahweh, I was not known to them. In other words, the name Jehovah, Jehovah means the self-existing God who always keeps his promises. The Bible says that they knew him as El Shaddai. They knew him as God Almighty. He says, but they did not know him as Jehovah. They did not know him as the self-existing God who always keeps his promises. They did not know him as Yahweh. Yahweh, the God of covenant love and the God of grace. Even though they knew him as God Almighty, they did not have this personal revelation of God as Lord, as Jehovah or Yahweh, the God who always keeps his promises, the covenant God of love and grace. Now, why is this so important? Well, it is important because in verse number four, God was about to enter into a covenant with these people. He was giving them this covenant, promising to bring them out of bondage into the land of Canaan, a land that was flowing with milk and honey. And even though they knew God as God Almighty, El Shaddai, they never knew him as Jehovah. They never knew him as Yahweh. They did not know him as the self-existing God who always keeps his promises. They did not know him as the God of covenant love and the God of grace. This is important because the promise was being made to individuals who for their entire lives had been slaves. That's right, the people of God. They were in Egyptian bondage for some 400 years. And God is making this promise to him. He's establishing a covenant with them. But before he could bring them to a place of abundance, before he could deliver them from slavery and put them in this land that is flowing with milk and honey, he had to first empower them to believe that, that, that he himself is a God of promise and he himself is a God of covenant. And how did he do that? He did so by revealing himself as Jehovah, by revealing himself as Yahweh, the self-existing God who always keeps his promises, the God of covenant love and the God of grace. In other words, what God will do for us through his names. What's in a name? A name is everything. Because when you really begin to know the name of God, you begin to know his nature. You begin to know his character. You begin to know the scope of authority that he is willing to use on your behalf. Think about it for a moment. I said this before, and I really believe that it bears saying again. And that is anything, anything his name is, it represents something that God is never unwilling to do in our lives. And since his name is Jehovah, since his name is promise keeper, that would suggest to us that our heavenly father, it is always his will. And I did say always. It is literally always his will for his promises, all of his promises to manifest in each and every one of our lives. Every promise of God in Christ Jesus, it is yea and amen. Listen, over these next few weeks, we'll be looking at what I call the redemptive names of God. And as we do so, something amazing is going to happen in our lives. As we look over, as we study these names, we'll begin to know God's nature. 
We'll begin to know his character. We'll begin to know the scope of authority that our Heavenly Father is willing to use on our behalf. Truth of the matter is, by knowing his name, we will supernaturally be empowered to believe him to take him at his word as we continue to remember and recognize all of the benefits we have in him as our heavenly father. So listen, make sure that over the next few weeks that you tune in to each and every podcast and receive this world, this word, because you're going to discover the nature, the character, and the authority that our Heavenly Father is always willing to release for our benefit. Remember, anything His name is, it represents something that our Father is never unwilling to do or to manifest in our lives. So make sure that you tune in next week as we continue to look at and address the question, what's in a name. Listen, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this has been your moment of grace. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms by subscribing to our Beacon Light of Homer YouTube channel and following us on Beacon Light of Homer Facebook and Instagram pages. Join us for a life-changing word on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. for our Beacon Light of Homa worship experience or Wednesday on our Grace Reloaded Bible Study at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bishop Herb would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and be sure to stay connected by subscribing to this Moment of Grace podcast. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, make sure you share it with your friends and loved ones. Remember, Because of His awesome grace, our God is faithful to manifest every blessing and benefit Jesus has paid for through His finished work on the cross of Calvary. Our part is to believe, receive, and enjoy what has already been provided, motivated by His tremendous love.